Hello, my friends. Long time I haven't made a video about PhD. As such, my PhD. If you have followed last major video on my PhD update was my uh, PhD failure story video, which I might see on the screen here. So yeah. Um, let's start with how far am I from my end goal? As my channel name says, some with PhD. And if I don't get a PhD, then what's going to happen? Well, this uh, video, in this video, I'm going to talk about all these things. Like, when is my PhD thesis defense? How far am I from my end goal? So let's start referring back very briefly to my PhD fail story. If you have seen that video, you will already understand. You can skip this part to the next part. I have already timestamps in the video description below. So yeah, so let's go back. Uh, to that video so my PhD is already delayed by six months so instead of four years I'll be graduating in 4.5 years as expected till now so luckily in this time I also get full salary and I have a PhD job contract which is also extended from four to four point five years like six more months because of COVID I had some experimental delays and this caused this extension and also uh, extended my residence permit along with my contract. Okay, so coming back to my thesis defense. So if you have been following my Instagram stories and my YouTube community posts, then you already know by now that my expected defense date is somewhere in February 2022. So that is also supposedly the last month of my PhD contract. Ideally here you need to publish three to four articles in very good impact factor journals and conferences depending on your field and this required number of publications and the quality of publications also varies from faculty to faculty and groups to groups. So don't take it word by word like what I need. You also need that. You might need something else. So in my case, I have two journal publications till now. One was my recent publication in the literature review in IEEE TLT, Transactions in Learning Technologies. And the other one was in MDPI sensors. Both are like above 3.5 impact factor journals. So they are really good in our field because in our field, something which is greater than 2.5 is considered really good because it's a very new emerging field so it's kind of not matured yet so you will find um, not that high impact factor like something like nature which is like 40 50 or something like that yeah so and i also have one conference publication which is also considered as a part of my thesis chapter uh, which is an ectel conference european conference on technology enhanced learning because my research is centered around educational technology or ed tech and learning analytics so these are some of the uh, important journals in our field and so as for as per my supervisors i'm now ready to start preparing and thinking about my thesis defense which needs to be really carefully planned months ahead sometimes even 10 months ahead or one year ahead of time now let's focus on the phd thesis so uh, now I'm writing my last article, which is actually the fourth article for my thesis and also my thesis. And you might be wondering like, how am I managing both? So here you have this nice system that you can uh, add up your publications as different chapters in your thesis. And you can compile them to a nice story where you have each publication as a chapter and you write a general introduction and a general discussion and a general conclusion. So that is the only thing that you write completely new or maybe reuse some abstracts or introduction. I mean, not introduction, some abstracts and some things from your already publications. But that is the only thing that you write for the thesis. So in that way, it is not that difficult. I have also made a detailed video on this for those of you who will be doing masters now or are planning to do PhD later, you can check this video, which kind of compares master thesis and PhD thesis. And one thing, remember my friend, I also have different short publications like demo, posters, second author publication, third author publication, not first author. So those kind of publications are normally ideally not considered for your thesis. 
because that is not kind of your own work and demo and posters are obviously very short uh, kind of not considered that significant for the thesis so the main thing is that uh, don't run after publishing more always go after quality publications and plan ahead of time like it should not be random so the publications that i have kind of fit into that high level narrative that i have the storytelling for my thesis so you always need to plan before you publish something like how does it fit um, to my high level story that i am going to tell in my thesis and then it will be very helpful if you have that already in mind while publishing it will be very fast and very helpful when you write the thesis like the general intro general discussion and general uh, conclusion so as i said always try to publish something of very high quality although it might require you a lot of time as you have seen my literature review normally literature reviews in a very good impact factor journal takes time but it took me like more than 2 years almost 2 years so yeah takes time but be there uh, have that perseverance and at the end that will pay off trust me from experience okay so finally ending this video because this is a short update about my phd but the video is already longer uh, what is the plan ahead so now i'm completely occupied with writing my phd thesis um planning the short tidbit things and also writing my fourth article doing some data analysis for the fourth article and obviously making these vlogs and writing the blogs by the way this whatever i'm saying in the video now will be in the blog on my website and also the link will be in the description if you want to have a quick read of the blog and you don't want to watch the video and i'm also trying to publish as much blogs as possible of all these videos of my experiences in netherlands about my phd in europe everything every time i publish a video that's my plan for now let's see how far can i go so we have already decided who will be the committee for my phd because defense here as i have said is a very ceremonial event i have recorded 3 to 4 phd defenses and before i have my phd defense i will give you a fair amount of idea like by making a short uh, kind of a documentary short video to explain like how the defense takes place here what are the different steps pre covid post covid covid everything so a lot has changed after covid obviously but let's hope fingers crossed <laughs> i don't know what's going to happen during my defense uh, so as of now it is somewhere in feb 2022 and as we have the committee so we need to inform the committee and be sure that they have some time free during those weeks in feb 2022 which is like not very far because you have 20 different steps which need to needs to kick in after i submit the first draft of my thesis to the committee before i get approval uh, after i get approval from my supervisors so the plan as of now is that i submit my first draft to them by first week of october when i also submit my fourth article to the LAC conference LAC is actually a very good conference learning analytics conference in our field if you check in google it has a very high ranking it is ranked in top five journals among the top five journals in educational technology so yeah that's the plan as of now and if all these things kick in if i finish if i manage to finish all these things by first week of october then i don't think anything can stop me from having my phd defense in the month of feb probably in the second half of feb 2022 and we'll also have a date soon you'll be seeing in the video so i hope you like this video don't forget to smash the like button share this video subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet till next video goodbye from netherlands peace